So welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to give you a breakdown of how I designed my own ghost companion for Destiny 2. But before we get into that, I need to let you know that this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist. So NVIDIA and PC Specialist have been working together under an initiative called NVIDIA Studio, which is all about designing products for creative professionals. So if you take a look at the link in the description, you'll be taken to a page on PC Specialist website, where you'll see NVIDIA's recommended specs for a wide range of budgets, and on there you'll be able to design your own computer. I've been using PC Specialist for years, I think they're great, and they were kind enough to provide me with a new computer, which I've nicknamed the Render Beast, which I'll be using to render the finished animation for this project. So let's get into it. Destiny 2 to keep it short is a first person looter shooter game set in a massive science fiction universe. I love the story, I love the art style, I love the gameplay and so many things about it, but in Destiny every player or guardian has their own companion ghost as it's called, which is this floating little robot thing that's basically responsible for resurrecting you if you die, but they're quite interesting things because in the game they're supposed to be different for every individual, so in the game there are so many different like skins and styles that you can choose from, and I thought wouldn't it be cool if I could design my own ghost? And I thought it would be interesting because I could take like different motifs of my style, even my logo, and try and combine it all into just a small robotic drone that would represent me, essentially. I'm very happy with how it turned out and I recorded the entire thing, so I'm going to explain my full process while I show you some of the footage. So the first thing I wanted to do was try and recreate the classic ghost style. It's got a very definitive shape, basically just a white ghost with a spherical center, which is where the eye is, and these blocky wings coming off to the side. The reason why I wanted to do this before designing my own was so I would have a a kind of base to work from and also if I wanted to design any more in the future I would have a template that I could work with. So the first thing to do here was create the eye and that's quite basic it's just a sphere and I slice some bits off the end using a cylinder and a boolean operation but to get the beveled edge going around those slices there's one trick I wanted to use that I haven't actually tried before and it's using the bevel node in the shader editor to fake a bevel look around the edges. So you just plug that straight into the normal input of the shader so in this case the principle would be SDF and you get the beveled look around the edge. Cheap and easy you don't need to do it manually. Even though I was trying to build up the classic looking ghost I wanted to make sure the eye was how I wanted it all the way through because that's like the main centerpiece and I knew from the beginning I wanted to take my logo and turn that into some kind of eye but the thing is just slapping the logo in front of the object didn't really do it I thought it was just like too ungainly to be an eye but then with a simple moment of inspiration I thought what if we just scaled down the center of the logo a bit because that would look more like a pupil so that's what I did I did it in affinity designer exported it as a png then plugged it into a new material providing the color to the shader and the alpha value as well once I had the basic eye shape I I tried to create the wings. This was surprisingly difficult because with the wings when you have a look at them they have this curved base and then they turn into a regular kind of hard surface object. So you need to try and resolve having this curved area with these flat surfaces and it's actually a bit trickier than you think. So I didn't get it completely accurate. I took some liberties and kind of adjusted it how I liked it. But at the end of it I thought okay well here we go. I've got the eye, I've got the wings, now it's time to experiment and try some new things. From this point onwards it was mostly improvisation. But then I thought okay well what do I want from this piece? The logo is like the main thing I want to take from, but also my favorite style, which is glossy black surfaces with emissive blue lighting, so essentially the Tron style. Well, okay, my logo has a giant ring going around it, so let's try rings. So I had a massive ring floating around the eye, and then I tried taking some segments from the ring and putting that around the surface of the eye body. Combining that with the ornate hard surface elements, I thought, okay, well, this is an interesting direction. Let's see how we can push this. I made sure that all the elements that were being made to structure the surface of the eye object would actually be parented to the sphere, so that when I wanted to animate it, I could just rotate the sphere object and every Everything else would come along with it. I continued developing the details for the body and if you look very carefully you'll notice that I've tried to keep that logo motif because if you imagine a horizontal line from where the eye is you'll notice that the ornate details stop and leave a empty gap and that's kind of representative of that center horizontal line going through the logo. I did think to myself I don't really like the blocky shape of the classic wings so I want to do something a bit more my style and I like having kind of harsh shapes layered on top of each other floating around quite reminiscent of the style of the guardians from the elite dangerous series as well. I was thinking okay maybe we can have lots of these sharp shapes kind of floating around and morphing into different shapes but I didn't want to make it too complex to animate but we're experimenting we're trying different things. Throughout this process of layering up these different shapes I tried adding a curve with some smaller repeating elements I don't know why I just I just wanted something repeating and we'll get to that later on as well and I thought it looked cool but it didn't really click with how I wanted it maybe having that effect would look cool in a different version but I decided against it for this one. I made sure that the wing structures that I was building were symmetrical so as I was adding more details here I noticed that the floating structures I was starting to make were actually kind of representing the original wings in some way. If you took a silhouette of them you would see that they had this blocky shape which kind of represented the original wings so I thought okay we can run with this. Functionally we can make this quite similar to the original ghosts. I made sure they were symmetrical but I was thinking okay well there's some gap here in between like the upper and the side wings which we could fill in with something. So I tried putting in some extra ring segments there just to see 
see how it would look. Again, I wasn't too sure about it. I thought that looked pretty cool. But then the idea struck me, okay, what if we take these layered wing segments and allow them to rotate on their own axes? And in that case, those ring segments would get in the way, especially for the top and bottom ones. So let's get rid of those. Now at this point, I thought, okay, well, I've got the kind of physical structure I want. I don't know how I want them to move. But now it's time to add a bit of uh, creative detail in terms of materials. So I added some emissive strips along the borders of the wings. And in my mind, this looks cool, but it also helps you identify which way they're rotating or like the layout of the wings from a distance. I also wanted blue to be a general surface accent color as well. So I took different segments of those layered wing elements and made them blue. So the same material for this was assigned to the different parts of the wings. Taking a look at this in the cycles and material preview rendered modes, it looked really cool in both of them. So I was quite happy with it. I was starting to feel like the design is really starting to come together. But now we've got the structure and the visual style. I thought, okay, now it's time to test the animation. So here you can see I'm seeing what it's like when I'm I'm spinning the ring and making sure that the wings kind of move out the way so the ring has enough clearance. The motion of this ring is also kind of inspired by the film Contact. If anyone's seen that, the Jodie Foster film. There's a really cool scene in there, spoilers, where she's getting into this transport device and it's essentially the opening for a wormhole. And there's a bit where she's walking over to it and she looks over to the side and you can see these huge ring structures rotating around. And I suppose their purpose is essentially to open up the entry to the wormhole. So I thought miniaturizing that and having that kind of rotating around the ghost would be like a really cool idea. I was quite happy with the motion of this. I thought it looked really cool. There's quite a lot you can do with it. And having the eye look around independently as other pieces are moving also just provides a lot of character. So I thought, okay, I'm happy with the shape. I'm happy with the look. I'm happy with the motion and the potential for animation. Now let's push it a bit further. I want to add some more details. So these surfaces were too basic for me. So I brought in my modular metal shaders, I copied them over with a jug object. Basically, I just took this jug from like the blend file where all my node groups are and pasted it in. I think there's something quite funny or maybe poetic about bringing the shaders in with a jug because I can just like pour them into a new blend scene. Okay. Don't worry, that probably sounds stupid. But they're all procedural. I was adding these imperfection details over the surfaces and you can see here as I'm zoomed in, it looks really cool. I don't think anyone would really look that closely, but if I wanted to do any larger renders, like if I wanted to print it up and put it on my wall, for example, then I think those extra details would really pop out. So turning off the volume, performance is actually quite good with Cycles X and the details look really nice, especially at the back of the ghost where the ornate elements are kind of coming together. I was actually quite surprised with how nice the back of the ghost looked, which is a shame because you never really see it in the animation. Maybe I'll have to do another one where he turns around and does a little twirl or something, shakes his little eye bum around just to show off the ornate details. Anyway, now it's time for more atmospheric effects. I considered adding an extra object volume to provide some more wispy effects that could move across the ghost as the animation progressed, but I decided against it for the render time trade-off, but also I thought that it just detracted from some of the other details as well. I thought this is a nice object, so I want to have it kind of crisp. We don't need volumetric details in every corner of the frame, so the world volume should be enough. I also added some emissive particle details that could uh, rise up throughout the scene, almost like little M and if you watched my last video on Blender tips, then uh, this is a callback to that. I also added some vegetation from the Botanic add-on, and I'm using this quite a lot now because I just love the comfort added of some like earthbound vegetation. And incidentally, I spend quite a lot of time on earth in the game anyway, so it makes sense for my ghost to be there. But something I just couldn't let go of is I just wanted some obviously repeating pattern going around the object. So I thought, okay, well, one place it would actually look quite good is if I did it around the outside of the ghost's eye, and it would make use of some of this extra empty black space for the eye screen. So I did that, and now that all of that was complete, I thought, okay, well, now it's time for the render. I've got the visual style done, I've got the animation done, so why not render? So this is where the new render beast computer came in handy. Again, thank you Nvidia and PC Specialist. So for my main work computer, which I'm using now, a regular frame of this at 2000 by 2000 pixels, 100 samples using the optics denoising, comes out to about 1 minute and 47 seconds. But on the new render beast computer, the same setup comes out to just 29 seconds, which is a massive performance improvement. To tell you the computer specs, my current computer has an i9 9900K with a 2080 Ti and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And the render beast computer has an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X with an RTX 3090 as a graphics card and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's a big step up. I didn't end up making a note of how long the final animation took, but we can make an estimation from the frame time. So it's about 29 seconds per frame, but every frame is different because it's an animation, so it changes. But we'll keep that as the estimation, so 29 by 300 because it's 300 frames in total, 8,700. So that's seconds divided by 60, that makes minutes, so 145 minutes divided by 60 again for hours, so that's 2.4 hours. Now again, I definitely could have cut that down by optimizing different parts of the scene, but I didn't really want to compromise here. And this also includes motion blur as well. I've got to mention that. If you look at the ring as it's spinning around, you can just about see the slight amount of motion blur. Anyway, here's the final result. I hope you enjoy it. It's my custom ghost. I wish I could have it in the game. Bungie, please. I have the blend file. I can give it to you. I just want to walk around with it. In 
in game. But actually, I don't really want to cheat on my current ghost in game because it's this really cute rubber ring one. And I'm very happy with that as well. But yeah, I think Cade would be proud of the results. And it's probably the most nerdy I've ever been in a video. But yeah, like I said, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist. Check out the link in the description if you want to get your hands on your own machine and check out their recommended specs. It's even just fun playing around with the different values on there because you can customize your own computer on there within the range of the recommendations as well. So it's really fun just to play around and see what you can make. And as I mentioned throughout the videos as well, the GPU acceleration provided by NVIDIA really, really helps me with my work, especially using the Optics render device. And in this case as well, using the Optics denoising just to clean out some of the noise on the final frames for this. So yeah, check out the range of products and technologies. The link is below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know that only a small percentage of my audience probably knows what Destiny is, but this is a project I just really wanted to do because I am a fan. So if there are any other Destiny players, then uh, let me know in the comments. And if you were to design your own ghost, let me know what you would change as well. I want to know what yours would look like. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time.